In this lesson, we're going to be graphing linear equations. The success criteria is I can create a table of values and write ordered pairs given a linear equation. I can plot ordered pairs to create a graph of a linear equation. And I can use a graph of a linear equation to solve a real life problem. So I'm scrolling down here. A linear equation is an equation whose graph is a line. The points on the line are the solutions of the equation. You can use a graph to show the solutions of a linear equation. The graph below represents the equation y equals x plus 1. So right here, I have an input-output table. And then in this column, I have the corresponding ordered pair to this xy table. Okay, So if I plug in negative 1 for x, I get negative 1 plus 1 which is 0, and that's my y value. And then that corresponding point that I would plot is negative 1, 0. That's plotted right here. And then here I have 0, which is the easiest number to plug in. I just plug in 0, and the x term disappears, so I just am left with 1. So that uh, ordered pair is 0, 1, and that's right here. And then I have uh, my x value is 2. I plug this in. I get 2 plus 1, which is 3. So now I have the ordered pair 2, 3. And that's right here. And you can see all these points fit on the same line, which is the, uh, the line is all of the solutions of this equation. In this example, we're going to graph the line y equals negative 2x plus 1. Well, I like to say whenever you're graphing and you're feeling unable, make a table. And that would be a table of values. So I'm going to make a table of values here with x's and y's. So there's my x. There's my y. Um, and you only need two points to graph a line. But the more points that you have, the more accurate your graph will be. So I'll do four points here. I'm going to pick negative 1, 0, because 0 is the easiest value to pick. Then I'm going to do 1 and 2. So those would be my uh, values that I'll pick. So what, we're, what we want to do is we want to plug all of these x values in to find our corresponding y values. And then we can plot the corresponding ordered pair on our graph. So over here, I'm going to rewrite my equation, y equals negative 2x plus 1. Okay. So first, I'm going to plug in negative 1. So that's going to be y equals negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1. This is negative 2 times negative 1 is 2 plus 1, which equals 3. So my corresponding y value is 3 right here. Uh, for 0, I don't even need to show any work because I know when I plug 0 in for x, 0 times anything is 0, and that whole term drops out. So all I'm left with is 1 right here. So I can put 1 here. Okay, 1 is another easy number to plug in. I just get y equals negative 2 times 1. Well, that just stays negative 2, so that's negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So that's my y value for this one. And then for the last one, I have y equals negative 2 times 2 plus 1. Well, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 1. Well, that equals negative 3. Now, if you notice, I'll scroll back up here. If you notice, I see every time I increase x by 1, right here, I'm adding 1, I'm adding 1, I'm adding 1, I'm subtracting the same thing on, over here, I'm subtracting 2, subtracting 2, subtracting 2. So once you figure out that pattern, you actually don't even need to um, show all of your work. It's a good idea to show, show all of your work, but if you can figure out that pattern without it, you can do that. Anyway, now it's time to plot the corresponding ordered pair, so I'm going to slide back over to our graph. Well, my first point, negative 1 and 3, I can rewrite this pair as negative 1, comma, Three. Now, I'm not going to do this for all of them, but you can get the you can get the hang of it. This is negative one, and this is three. So we have our ordered pair negative one comma three. So that point is going to be left one, up three. Just a little refresher on how to plot ordered pairs. Okay. Now this one is zero and one. This is going to be the point zero comma one. So I start. I don't move any in my x uh, direction, and then I just go up one in the y. So that's my point right here. This is one negative one. So this means that I would go right one and down one, right there. Okay, And then this one is 2, negative 3. So I'd go right 2, because that's positive uh, 2 in the x direction. And then I go down 3. That's negative 3 in the y direction. And now I have successfully plotted all my points. The last thing I want to do is draw a line through these points. So you get, you get your straight edge 
ruler or any other straight edge, and you line it up with the points, and then you draw a line through it. So if you notice, I drew my line on the entire graph. I didn't draw a little tiny line here. It even went off a little bit, which is fine. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is put arrows at the end because I want to show that this line is infinitely long. Um, if I didn't have arrows, then that would be assumed to be a line segment, but we want the full line. Okay. Um, and now we're done. We've successfully graphed the line uh, that represents this equation y equals negative 2x plus 1. One last thing that I want to mention. Um, I just picked these x values um, randomly. You can pick any x values that you want, but I would recommend that you pick x values that are on your given graph. So we're going to talk about graphing horizontal and vertical lines right now. The graph of y equals b is a horizontal line passing through the point 0, comma, b. The graph of x equals a is a vertical line passing through the point a, comma, 0. Okay? And we're going to talk about why that is in the next example. So for this first one, we want to graph y equals negative 3. And we see that this is y equals a constant, y equals a number. Okay? So if you already knew, you could just draw a horizontal line at the point negative 3 for y, so at this negative 3 y value right here. Okay? But we're going to show why that is in, the, in a second. So I'm going to make my table of values down here. So x and y, you can do a horizontal table as well. So I'll just pick a couple of uh, x values, negative 2, 0, and 2. We'll say that. Well, if I try to plug in my x value here, there's no x to plug it into. If I try to plug in negative 2 for x, well, there's nowhere to uh, plug x. We still get negative 3 for y. And that's the same for 0. If I plug 0 in, well, once again, there's nowhere to plug this 0 in, so it still stays negative 3. And same thing for 2, it's going to stay negative 3. So that means that my points are just going to be, all the y value at least, is going to be negative 3. You see, if, if I plug, plot this point negative 2, comma, negative 3, I go left 2, down 3. 0, I stay 0, and I go down 3. I go right 2, down 3 for this point. Okay? So now all I have to do is just draw my horizontal line. So now we've successfully graphed the equation y equals negative 3. Now, you don't need to make this table. If you recognize that you can just draw a horizontal line at y equals negative 3, you can just do that. But if you're ever feeling unable, like I said earlier, you can always make a table. For this one, part b, graph x equals 2. Well, remember, x equaling a constant, uh, that means that we have a vertical line at that x value. Okay, So that means that I'm going to have a vertical line here. But we can use similar logic with the table. Uh, to figure that out. So I have my x, y table here, and I'll pick a few values. But this time, I know what x equals no matter what. x is always 2. Okay, so x is 2 regardless of what y is. I can pick, uh, a, let's say y is going to be negative 3 here, and I'll say y is 0, and I'll say y is 2 here. Okay, well, if I plot these points, 2, comma, negative 3, well, that's right here, 2, negative 3, so I'll write that point down. And then right here, I just go 2, comma 0. That's right there where my mouse is. And then I have 2, comma 2. So that's right here, 2, 2. If you notice, all of these points are on this vertical line. So the last thing I need to do is just uh, draw my line through these points. I'll draw my arrows to show that this line is infinitely long. And now we're done with this one. Once again, you do not need to make a table here, but um, it does help if you're not sure. If you aren't using a table, I would recommend using two uh, y values when x is 2 that are far away so you get a more accurate line. Anyway, now we're done graphing y equals negative 3 and x equals 2. The wind speed, y, in miles per hour of a tropical storm is y equals 2x plus 66, where x is the number of hours after the storm enters the Gulf of Mexico. When does the storm become a hurricane? Well, if we look over here under this picture of the storm, a tropical storm becomes a hurricane when wind speeds are at least 74 miles per hour. Okay. Well, we're given the equation of the wind speed. That's y. Okay. And we know y is measured in miles an hour. And we need, we need at least 74 miles per hour in order for it to be categorized as a hurricane. So here's my equation right here. 
I'm going to rewrite this. Y equals 2X plus 66. And we know Y is the wind speed. X is the number of hours. Okay, that's what it says right here. X is the number of hours after the storm enters the Gulf of Mexico. And we want to know when that storm becomes a hurricane. Okay, well, we know that the hurricane is when 74 miles per hour uh, wind speeds. Okay, and I know that with the wind speed is Y. So what I can do is graph this equation and find on the graph where Y equals 74. Now, this isn't the only way to solve this problem, but since we're graphing in this section, uh, we want to solve this by graphing. So anyway, I'm going to make my table of values. So I see that on my graph, I have input values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. I'm going to start with 0, 1, 2, and 3 and see where that gets me. Okay. Well, 0 is the easiest number to plug in. I plug 0 in for this uh, y equals 2x plus 6. Well, the whole x term goes away because 2 times 0 is 0, and then we're just left with 66. So I get 66. Okay. And then for 1, if I plug 1 in, I'll do that down here, I get y equals 2 times 1 plus 66. Well, that's going to give me 2 plus 66, which is just 68. So now I have 68. Okay, I'll plug in um, 2 now. I get, I'll do that over here. y equals 2 times 2 plus 66. Okay, and I see this is 4 plus 66, which is 70. All right. If you notice here, there's a pattern. The pattern is every time I add 1 to x, I'm adding 2 to y. Okay, so you could figure out without doing the calculation that this next one is just going to be the one before it plus 2, which is going to be 72. And I'm going to plot all these points while we have them on the table. So this is 0, 66. So it's going to be right there. The next one is going to be 1, 68. And then the next one's going to be 2, 70, which would be right there. And 3, 72. Now, what you could do is you could uh, just graph a line here and check where it's going to equal 74, because we know that it needs to be at least 74 mile per hour wind speed to be a hurricane. But I see that my graph is pointing this way, and I see that my next number, if I keep this pattern going, is going to be 74. If I make this 4 right here on my table, I see that the next number here would be 74. So I'm going to plot that point. Now I'm going to graph my line. Okay, And you didn't have to do that, but I just wanted to do that for accuracy. So I'm taking my straight edge. I'm lining it up. So I've drawn my line through my points, okay? And I apologize if it's not 100% accurate. I'm doing it on an iPad, and it's very difficult to do that. But anyway, um, I want to see where my arrows go. Well, in the context of this problem, X is the number of hours after the storm enters the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you could have arrows going this way to, to represent negative numbers being hours before it uh, entered Gulf, the Gulf of Mexico, but... I'm just going to leave it right here. I am going to have uh, my arrow go this way, though, okay? because who knows how long the storm is going to be in the Gulf of Mexico in this hypothetical scenario. Anyway, I want to look at this line and see where my y value is equal to 74. I see that this is 72. This is 76. So 74 is right here, and I know that that's at four hours, okay? Uh, there's a 4 right here. So this is when x is 4 hours. So to answer our question, when does the storm become a hurricane? The storm becomes a hurricane 4 hours after it enters the Gulf of Mexico. And now we're done with this one.